Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you. To our, um, well, me, okay, you're going to turn off your volume. Y'all got to turn off y'all. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to thank you for joining us for our third, third, yes, our third um, National Scout Town Hall meeting. Uh, people are still joining, but we are going to get a start because we don't want to delay too long because um, we don't want to be here until too late. So without further ado, we will start with our prayers and I'm going to ask our resident captain will open us with a word of prayer. Good evening, everyone. Let us pray. Almighty God, we are thankful that you brought us to this part of this day for that we give you a high note of, of praise. God, as we gather for this meeting, give us open ears to listen and to hear. Give us clarity of thought and of speech to hear what you have to say. Dear Lord, let may all ideas contain let us have robust, honest, and fair discussions. Be with us as we meet, dear Lord, we ask in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Martin. All right, we will go on. With the first, sorry, next gentleman, gentlemen, to welcome. We excited before we said the prayer, so we will move on to item three, which is a brief report on the current scope year. During the year, we made additional progress with scouting renewed. As you would know, scouting renewed is a program that looks to renew the coating product in Barbados. And during the year, we would have experienced our first AGM under the new format. This is the first time that each scout group was given the opportunity to nominate delegates to the annual general meeting so that the group would have an actual input into um, that level of the association's management. Um, it was new for our association and work 
think very well. We had a very good attendance. All the groups were not represented, but most of them were. And I look forward to this year for it. Um, for everybody to be represented this year and more robust discussion at the AGM. In addition to that, we final, finally finalized the whole appointment process. It was a matter of trial and error. We had worked it out in theory, but during the year, we finalized exactly how it would go from the time a person submits an application form, the time that they receive a full appointment. So that, that process has been completed now. And we now are finalizing the process that will go from your full appointment to when it is time for that appointment to be renewed and the processes that will be involved in that situation. The and a policy revision was almost complete. We have completed the revision level of upper scores. And we are now working on the wood bat. Outside of that, the, the one session that section that we have not completed as yet, the matter of retraining for existing leaders. And during the coming year, we hope to have that finalized and completed. During the year, we launched Goat's Leap, which is Learning Entrepreneurship and Environmental Protection. It's a project that was developed with a planning grant we received from Jeff um, of the, from the UNDP, Jeff as in GEF. And from the planning grant, we were able to develop a project for the association. We are in the process of seeking funding, full funding for it. We've received partial funding from Massey Foundation, and it is hoped that Jeff would provide the most of the rest of the funding for the project, but that approval has not been received as yet. In the meantime, we've had to start the project because you cannot tell one funder you can't start until the other comes on board. There are timelines um, associated with the grant that you receive. So, we started the program is at three trial locations because it's a pilot project. That is the Roland Edwards Primary School, West Terrace Primary School, and Scout Headquarters. For Scout Headquarters, we will be using not just the groups that meet at Scout Headquarters, but that those that meet within the vicinity of Scout Headquarters. So there are eight units that will be participating in the project at Scout Headquarters. So far, we have engaged the boys in container gar gardening, which is part of the environmental protection part, and the recycling of pallets and using them to create useful items. Um, this has just started. Well, the boys have started container gar gardening now about six weeks, and we are hoping to move to the gardens, the three locations, at, as in physical garden, at the beginning of the new school term. Um, we have completed the initial site visits in the two locations, and we are hoping to get them all up and running by next term. Once the project has been completed at the three pilot locations and they have worked out all the bugs. We will then, we will then expand it to any other group which wish to participate in the project. With respect to the container gardening, that is something that you can do within your group without um, the assistance from us any group who wish to start with the container gardening can contact us and we can get you started on that if you so desire. The main part of the funding, which is for the actual garden, that will not be available until the pilot projects have been completed. We had a family fun day, which was the first time we all came together really after COVID and it was a success. The second one is being held Saturdays from now, and I'm looking forward to see everybody there. 
the boy that went enjoyed themselves, and I'm hoping that we will have a, a bigger and better time this year. Our scouts went to the World Scout Jamboree in Korea, South Korea, in August last year. It was a good experience for us. Um, when it, our members travel that far and visit a country that most of us would probably never have the opportunity to visit. Jamboree had its challenges, as everybody knows, because it made world headlines, but um, our boys and the leader made the most of it, and they made sure that they enjoyed their trip. Um, I commend them for the way they handled themselves, and they came back with a lot of experiences and tales to share with everyone. We participated in national parades this year, and we had three instead of the usual two, because there was a national youth parade as well in September, and the association was represented well at all three of the parades. And during the year, we revised our development plan. We'll not go into that now because that is one of the items on the agenda on the discussions. And that is brief review of the current year. Um, before we move on, I would see if anybody has any questions that they wish to ask before I move on. All right, I take it that there are no questions as far as that is concerned. We will move on to our discussion session. Go on to 4A, BBSA Development Plan 2024 to 2029. We'll be looking at why a new plan, how, it, how was it developed, and where can I get a copy? So, when we reached the midpoint of our previous plan, our previous plan was from 2020 to 2025. At the beginning of 2020, sorry, in March of 2023, which is when it would have been the halfway point, we looked at the plan and realized that we had accomplished quite a few of the goals, um, more than half, in fact. But then when we looked at the remaining items and some of the ones that we have finished, we realized our reality and perspectives had changed because of COVID. When we developed that plan in 2020, there was no COVID. And by the time we finalized it and we were just into COVID, nobody thought it would have lasted that long. So the way we would have planned didn't match our reality anymore. So we decided we needed to review the existing plan and change course if necessary. A committee was established to do this and after consultation with the membership and partners, they compiled a revised plan. And that plan was approved by the National Executive Committee last month. The current plan, sorry, the new plan, which is the Barbados Boys Scout Association Development Plan 2024 to 2029, is available for download on our website, the resources section. That is www.barbadoscouts.org slash R-E-S. And it is there on that first page on the guidelines. It's also on the page that is titled um, regulations and information fee is on two places on the website. The plan looks to detail the way forward for the next five years and it sets out our various goals into three categories, short term, medium term, and long term. And with the start of the new year, next month, we will be devising a plan on how we will be addressing these and determining who will be responsible for the various um, 
items in the plan because it can be a case where one body is responsible for everything. So uh, we will be looking at that and dividing it out. We encourage everybody to assist where possible with the development plan and anybody who is willing to work on any of the items that are listed in the plan and do so by contacting headquarters. That is headquarters at barbadascouts.org. And it is a discussion, so I will now have a my preamble. And we give anybody who wish to ask any questions about it or make any comments about the development plan. All right, I think everybody had what they had to say during the hall on the development plan. All right, move on to item B. And this is one that has been given a difficulty and I was actually hoping more people will be here by this time because it's something that needs explaining for everyone. And that is adult member or volunteer. What is the difference? What are the different types of volunteers? And why do I need to apply if I want to be a volunteer? An adult member of the association is a person registered with the association as a youth leader and or an administrator. It can be both. And have received an appointment to that effect. Are, that is what would originally be called a warrant. They're called appointments now. They are entitled to wear the respective uniform after making the scope promise. They are required to complete the necessary training courses to complete their work badge. They are authorized to deliver the youth program to our youth members subject to the role that they are appointed to. If you are appointed as a club leader or assistant club leader, you are authorized to deliver the program to the, scouts, to the Cub Scout section. It's not a one appointment for all thing. Doesn't say you can't work with another section, but there are rules that govern that, and that's a different topic altogether. This should not be confused with an associate member who is also registered with the association. They are either registered as a source, right? They are, they are registered as either associate members, for, for instance, members of the group, district, or national council, or executive associate members, the executive members of the said councils. They are entitled to wear the respective uniform, and there is a uniform for associate members, but it is not the traditional leader's uniform that you are familiar with. If you look at r, &R there are uniforms for members, and there are uniforms for associate members and they are not identical. They are entitled to wear their respective uniform, but they are not required to make the scout promise. It was one of the biggest difference between members and associate members. They can complete training that the association offers, but it would not go all the way to wood badge like a normal member would. However, they are not, repeat, not authorized to deliver the youth program to our youth members. So because you are registered as a group council member or as the secretary for the group or treasurer or chair, that does not entitle you 
before and act as a leader and supervise boys. There are two separate and distinct roles. However, at group level, they can fulfill the role of a volunteer by means that they will have to carry out the process for volunteers. Just being registered as a group council member does not automatically make you a volunteer in the sense that we are going to talk about no. A volunteer is an adult who has agreed to assist the association either as an administrator or assisting in delivering, sorry, sorry, or assisting delivering the youth program. It can be great. So a person can come and volunteer and say, I want to assist your association. I don't want to be a member, but I am willing to come and do filing in the office. That's a volunteer. They will fill out the form. There will be different things to do. Or a person can say, I want to help one of the leaders with their unit. Both are volunteers, but different roles. And the criteria for both being approved would be slightly different. Volunteers working with youth members are required to be registered with the association, but they do not pay a fee and are not considered members of the association. If they want to be a member of the association, they'll have to apply to be an associate member in addition to being a volunteer. There is no uniform for volunteers and there's no rights afforded, membership rights afforded to volunteers. Volunteers are not, repeat again, not authorized to deliver the youth program to our youth members. They are there to assist the leader in, de in delivering the youth program, not delivering it. Effective this month, volunteers are required to complete the volunteer application form, which is available on the website. Although we are now enforcing this rule, it is not new. It is actually in the regulations and rules in each unit section. In fact, RNR says additional adults, for example, parents, subject experts from the community, may be used on a regular or occasional basis to support the program delivery. All additional adults need to confirm the personal inquiry and criminal record check requirements detailed in Rule 3.2. This is not something new. This is something new we are enforcing, but this is not something new. That was in the rules where we um, adopted the rules in 2021. There is one application form, regardless of what role you'll be fulfilling. So the volunteer application form is the same for administrator and for somebody looking to work with youth members. There's only one form. Volunteers are not authorized to have unsupervised access to youth members. This means that you can have somebody come in and assist you with your pack or colony or troop, but they are assisting you. You cannot put them to run the meeting and then go off on your or some other job or decide you are going to split your group into two and they're going to take one and go in one classroom and you are going to take the other half and go into another classroom or one is in the courtyard of the school and the next one at the back of the school. 
That is not permitted. That person now is not a volunteer. That person is acting as a leader. Yes, you can break into two groups and you deal with one and the other one person deals with the other as long as they are in sight of you. Not that you have to be standing up over their shoulder. You have to be supervising. And you cannot supervise if you are not present. It also means that if for some reason you cannot come, or you can be late, or whatever, that the volunteer will start the meeting and run the meeting on your behalf until you arrive because then the volunteer is acting as a leader. If you are not present at all, there's no way you can be supervising them in the role that they are fulfilling. If you want somebody to start the meeting for you, then that person needs to register as an adult member. That's the only way to get around that. There are different levels of assistance that adults can offer. A resource person who comes in to assist with a specific badge and does this once a term or less, not considered a volunteer. In other words, you decide to do the substance abuse badge and you call substance abuse um, council and they send somebody to work with you in one of your sessions or two of your sessions to complete the badge. That person doesn't have to register to be a volunteer. That's a one-off something. Even if they come every year to do it with your group, it is not a regular occurrence. They come for that specific um, session. And that body and they're helping you with the rest of the meeting. They are there to conduct that session. They do not have to be registered. A parent or helper assists you, maybe two, maybe three at the very most times during the term. Maybe not at a regular meeting. You know you've got a special meeting. You got a party, you're all celebrating something, or you may be going on a tour, and this body comes and helps you on that thing. That person does not have to be registered either. But I would recommend that you register them just to be safe but they do not have to be. Anybody who assists more than that needs to be registered, even if they're not coming every week. Note that even if this person, one of your volunteers have been volunteering with you for the last three or four years, and the Nordic program and whatnot, they are still not authorized to deliver the youth program, and they are still not authorized to have unsupervised access to the youth members. The only person who is allowed to have unsupervised access or to deliver the program is a registered member of the association authorized to work with youth. Not as I said, authorized to work with youth. Because if you join as a member, as an administrator, and you have not done any training that involves youth training, all you've done is administrative training, you are not authorized to deal with youth. That is the reality of the situation even though you may wear the same uniform. Regardless of how often your volunteer or help comes, they should complete a safe from harm certificate. If anybody that only come in once or twice, because it's a free something to do, so it takes 15 minutes at the most to complete a safe from harm certificate of yourself and Ask them to do it. Send them the link, let them sign in, and complete a safe from harm certificate. And that way you know there's no issues. Mm -hmm. 
volunteers are required to be registered so that we can have a record of who are work who is working with our youth members on a regular basis. This is required for insurance and legal purposes in the event that there is an accident or incident. Everybody only thinks about one kind of incident. But any kind of incident or accident can result in a liability case. Boys were playing a game. Somebody fell and got hurt. Accident. Not everybody will see an accident, especially if there's going to be medical bills involved in him being hurt. Then the insurance, the first thing your insurance is going to ask is who was in charge of the activity and were they authorized to be in charge. Now, when you are not present, is nobody authorized to be in charge? charge with those boys in charge of them. It means insurance will say, oh, well, that is not our responsibility. We'll have to pick up that bill. Who is going to cover it? Will you? We ain't talking about a little hundred or two hundred dollar bill. We're talking about somebody that get that will require corrective surgery. We had a young man a couple of years ago who fell during an activity we had ruled an accident, there was no one to push him, nothing, but he brought um, a bone in his collar. I can't remember if it was called a bone or something else there, but it required corrective surgery that cost thousands of dollars. Luckily, the event qualified and therefore the insurance paid the bill. But if all the I's were not dotted and the T's crossed, that would have been a different story. And that is why we need to do this. It's not that we are trying to make it more difficult for you. It is just that we have to make sure that we are covering all the bases. Does anyone have any questions about that? I'm sure somebody has to have a, a question about that. Trevor, Sandra, good evening. Can you hear me, Trevor? Yes. Yes, good evening. Okay, you have made some valuable points with the introduction and speaking about the difference between adult member and volunteer. For ease of reference, will there be a a little summary on that for members so that I know it's a lot for them to absorb right now. Yes, there will be. Yes, right. That would be nice. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other questions on that? I guess everybody is showing. All right, let's move on to item C. Coating activities and events. Which activities, events do I need to get permission for? Who do I get permission from? And what is the difference between notification and permission? Camp and overnight hike require specific permission before they can be held. That is any kind of overnight activity requires specific permission for the event to be held. There is an information sheet available on the website named Camping Applying for Permission. When it was created, it was circulated to all group leaders and asked to circulate to the members of the group. None of this was done. But I would like everybody to download the information sheet and to please read it. 
thing immediately. Have the problems we have with camps and getting permission for camp is covered in the information sheet. The information sheet steps out, lays out step by step. Um, processes are how to complete the form and what information is required. So I'm asking everybody to please look at that form. Permission to CAP comes from the national trainer. You have to complete your forms, which go into your district, usually via your ADC or district scouter, who passes them on to the relevant person in your district, who then submits them to the national trainer. The forms do not go straight from you to the national trainer. They are reviewed, they're usually reviewed by your ADC, any person in your district. But by the time they get a national trainer, they should not be any queries or questions. But if they are, the national trainer will then re return them to that same kind of requesting the additional information or requesting that whatever errors in the forms be corrected. The forms are resubmitted until they are correct. If there's other problems, it keeps going back and forth. And then when the camp, when everything is in order and the permission is given, the forms are signed by the national trainer and returned stating that permission has been granted. That is the specific information you need, permission that you need before you can have your overnight activity. Anything else is not permission. You see any national trainer somewhere and she's telling you, yeah, man, you can't go in. It's not permission to camp. Your DC telling you the same thing is not permission to camp. Or your ADC or district scope. When you get back that form, you have permission to camp. Getting the insurance certificate from headquarters, not permission to camp. But the insurance certificate is usually given before permission is granted because some owners of premises that you may be seeking permission to use for your camp will not give you permission until you provide that insurance certificate. And therefore, it is provided even before we sign off on the camp. All this insurance certificate that you will receive from me or someone from headquarters states that if this camp is approved, are covered by the association's insurance. It doesn't say you definitely got permission and it's covering you. That's not what it's saying. Until you get back your signed camp form, you do not have permission to camp. The activities do not usually require permission. And you are usually only required to inform your ADC slash district scouter. Anytime you leave your meeting place for any reason at all, are required to inform your ADC slash district scouter. Depending on the activity or event, the ADC or district scouter can request additional information. Ensure that the activity or event is properly planned. So for instance, you call and you tell the ADC, we are going to the playing field that is down the road from our meeting place and playing games. And more likely that would be okay and no problem. And they will notify the district that you are off the premises for that meeting. That's a different situation than saying, I'm taking the boys on a bus trip to Farley Hill. The ADC then may ask you, well, how are y'all getting there? Are you charging a fee? Um, was it backup? Things like that. 
not that you specifically have to get information, um, get permission, but they are within their rights to make sure that the activity you are planning will be safe. So for the majority of situations, they will not ask for additional information, but they can. They are within their rights to ask for additional information. Please note, this permission has nothing to do with fresh fries or anything else of the like. Yes, you have to get permission for those, but you also need to get permission from the Ministry of Health, the police for the loud noise, and all the other people. I'm not getting into those kind of permissions. I'm dealing just with scope permission. So if your event or activity overlaps with some other kind of laws or procedures, then you need to follow those as well. If you have a science special at school, you obviously you need the principal's permission or maybe the ministry, even though it's not a camp. That does not fall into this permission we are talking about. We are talking about what permission you need for a scope. So don't plan to sign a people's school and then say, well, the chief commissioner only said you had to check with them first. That is not what I am saying at all. I am dealing with the scope permission. Notification. Notification can be a call, can be or a message, whether WhatsApp, text, or email your NDC slash district scope inform them that of your activity or event. That's what we mean by notify. However, if you email or message, you are obligated to confirm that they received your message. That is email, text, WhatsApp, or you left a voicemail on the phone. You cannot do that and assume that they get it and that you have completed your obligation to notify them. You have to make sure that they have received the message if you did not speak to them in person. Okay. Are there any questions on that as well? Because that's something we, we have issues with as well. None? I'm very clear today. Everybody can understand what I'm saying. D. Proposed projects and activities for 2024-2025. We are looking at a couple of activities and is not a definitive list. We are open to suggestions from groups and districts where other activities be held. And I'm looking at national activities. This has nothing to do with the activities a specific district may be planning. This year, we will be having Lord Spare Our Lives, the Hawaii Reunion, as usual. We have them every other year. The last one was in 2022. Um, some people thought we had a way to see if we have a complete word badge before we had the reunion, but that is not the case. Um, the reunion will go ahead whether word badge comes off or not. We will be having, we will be sticking to the schedule of every other year. Actually, we have discussed it and we are looking at having a reunion every year. We will not have the formal church service, um, formal luncheon every year. That will happen every other year. But in the in-between year, we will be having a reunion in a more um, relaxed environment, um, not as an informal setting, let's put it that way. So the Noel Troop will have the opportunity to meet every year, but Every other year will be the formal event. And that is scheduled this year. The committee will be placed 
We will put in place shortly, as in we did last year, it will be a national committee for the district that in whose turn it will be will take lead on the committee. And this year it will fall the north. Um, we're very we're shown then the south, we are at the north now for this year's reunion. But as I said, it will not be the north planning the reunion. We'll be taking a lead on the committee planning the reunion. We are hoping to hold a national camp this year. After Kabuni was postponed, canceled, I'm not sure which one it was, we love having a national camp instead. However, based on when school will finish this year, it was not practical to have the national camp at the end of term that we would normally do. School doesn't finish all into the second week of August, which is well into Krapova. We'll be looking then at the third weekend, which will be just before all the main events in Krapova. And we didn't think that would be a good thing to try to hold a camp. Not just to the activities that are going on, but the facilities we'll be looking to use and utilize during the camp for activities, etc. more than likely will be all booked up with Krapova. So, Camp is still on schedule, but we are looking now at possibly the next year. All right? Um, I think it's something we need to have on a regular basis. And that is the thinking right now. It will be a camp for all four sections. We will be camping near to one another, if not necessarily, see it, not necessarily in the same location. So that the clubs would be building as usual. The scouts and ventures will be a nearby open area, hopefully a line of sight, but if not as close as possible. And the beavers will have an overnight during the whole event um, at the same location where the cubs are. We have we are looking at possible locations. We've had one or two suggestions, and there are no fixed details as yet on that. And therefore, your input is welcome into this activity. Our suggestions can come to headquarters or through your district, so that when we start to put more meeting bone, that we would have your suggestions. Right now, we are looking at possibilities of locations, and the type of activities we can offer in addition to the length of the camp. And when I say it's going to be at Easter, that does not necessarily mean the Easter weekend. We just mean during the Easter holiday at school. Okay, I'm not saying it won't be the weekend, but it's open right now. So I invite um, your input into the matter. We will need to set the dates early so that persons who need to request vacation from work will have ample time to do that and will be able to make themselves available for the camp. A other activity we are looking at is a promotional activity end of September, beginning of October. And we are open to suggestions on this activity. The, the Past, we've had the promotional march and questions about whether we should do that or not. I don't have a problem with the promotional march, but my problem with the march is it only highlights one aspect of what is available in scouting. And it is not even the main aspect of the scouting program. And therefore, me even if there is a march component to it, there have to be something bigger than just the promotional mark. We have to find a way to highlight this new program that we are offering, not just the um, parade part of it. And we are open to suggestions on that. This is going to come up quickly. We need to plan it from early. Notice that I have it, I'm talking about the end of September, beginning of October. Past promotion march has been 
at the end of October because school starts late and then the packs don't meet till we do and whatnot. However, if we are doing an activity that is going to be part of our recruiting, it cannot be at the end of October, which is in the middle of the term. It has to be closer to the beginning of the school year when all of our groups are recruiting. And therefore, that's why I'm looking at that kind of time period. But again, we have to look at when school will actually start, things like that. And the way I see it is if we are planning it from beforehand and everybody knows when it is going to occur, it should be e easier to put into motion because we should not have to wait for people come back to school before they are now getting information about the activity. And let me know if anybody has any other suggestions on what we can do during the coming year. I don't have a suggestion, but I wanted to let you know, being that we were looking at the national camp, the cabaret and money, but then that has been changed. I mean, the cabaret did. Did we get any other correspondence that they're there to like cabaret would be? Yeah. Um... Respect the cover, I don't know. I am not certain if the cover was postponed by a year or if it has been put off altogether. We'll have to wait until the next Chief Commissioner's meeting to find out which it is. All right, um, in reference to the I use that mic here. Uh, I asked Michael to unmute his, his uh, mic. You're not hearing anything, say. Hold on. No, you can't unmute yours. All right. Um, I have my mic on. Hey. Okay, everybody can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear now, Mike. All right, good afternoon, everybody. Everybody can hear me? Yes, please. Yes, we can, can hear, hear you, Mike. Mike. Okay, cool. Right. Um, I don't know what part you didn't hear or if you didn't hear anything at all. It was uh, making reference to the promotional march. 
and uh, certain certain elements that we can involve. Um, I know the parade aspect was highlighted by the chief, but I was talking about the fact that we can have um, some type of activity after the march where we usually, um, you know, end in Queens Park, where we can have the sponsoring authority throughout the districts uh, invited to come and uh, uh, along well, through the groups within those um, district um, to come and highlight and do some kind of recruiting program where they set up booths. And uh, within these booths, they have um, paraphernalia that will showcase different aspects, whatever sections that these groups um, have beavers, cubs, scouts. Uh, we even have the ventures have their own booth to highlight what they do and have some type of activities going on within the area. So as to when these people are invited, that they will come and be able to see, you not know, as the chief said, to also that the parade aspect, because they're already coming down to also see the parade and the and the dynamics which that involves, but to come and um, then have the conclusion where the activities being showcased afterwards will be uh, also a promotion, but the other aspects of scouting will be promoted. So I think that September is a fantastic idea because that's around the time that people are now um, gearing up to, well, in the, to come back into um, schools and during the July period, people usually do the um, reaching out to, in, you know, to try to entice the class force who are going to come back to scouting. So that would be a, a certain aspect I think that we can add to uh, if we're going to hold the promotional march. My only concern with that much though is we attempted that before is the problem is who ends up seeing it. And usually it's just our members who are in the park. The majority, they're the only people that see the display. The public does not see it in Queen's Park. All right, but uh, what about our marketing or our marketing adequate enough to entice these people to no, not they're, they're not just gonna come to the park because we got a display at the park. Mm -hmm. We got to be giving something in the park to get them to come to the park. Yeah, I understand what you're saying, but um you got a little excuse me anyway, you got a little noise here distracted. Yes, I understand what you're saying, but Marketing, I know we are doing a fantastic job now. At least you're doing some stuff here to IG and whatnot, where we are highlighting things as they come up. Uh, getting the people to know what's going, to, what's coming. And then also the parade should be a catch where you're going to Bridgetown. People are seeing the uniform. That's what they're, they're being aware that there are youth, that the organization is still here and it's uh, looking to grow. So I believe to marketing and um, you know, the same, because that's the name says it, oh, promotional. So we're trying to promote scouting. I know we, you know, we have a lot of things. We, we, people say we've been there, done that. But I think let me try to put a little something into it um, that might be a little, approach it a little differently. I think we have people on board now um, that are very good at marketing and uh, through the same uh, social media platforms that we use right now, I really believe that we can, you know, do something a little bit more this time around. We were, we were on a break from that because of COVID and coming back up. Now I think that the enthusiasm and the vigor uh, should be pushed amongst the districts to come out and really um, have a promotional more. I think it's well needed right now, actually, because more than ever coming off of the you know, lay, lay that we had in the past. Any other? Anybody has any other comments to add or suggestion?
I, I don't have any suggestions, but I support my point that we can look at it to... Sorry, Sandra, start, start again, please. Okay. I don't have any suggestions right now, but from what Mike said, just yes, now we can look at it and see if we can try it now after coming up of the, the, you know, the kind of the shutdown where the boys, there weren't much visibility that we can do something this year. We can look at it. I'll take his points and kind of brainstorm them and see how we can go forward with them. Okay. Right. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, sure. Yeah. Uh, I I noticed I saw a thing. It was last just last night that the cadets, for example, had some some uh emotional thing, and it was splashed on CBC. Yeah. So I saw it on 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 television. It was held at Harsons College, as far as they realized. Um, and so what what the uh the marketing people ought to be doing is trying to see maybe how we can. Can can maybe utilize a medium such as that, and of course, I I, I recognize your concern. Uh, is that you, it's a specific audience you want to reach, and if if you're not reaching that audience, then the market is just a market, and it doesn't it doesn't uh deliver the, the the intended outcome. But you may be able to do that, maybe via the media or some other other uh medium. That's just my suggestion. Um, the, the difference is that the mark for Cadet CSA was just that. They met at Arson College, they marked through town, ended at college and ended. That was it. So there was nobody, he probably wasn't invited to come to college to see them. It was just a march. Um, so our challenge is we want to drive traffic somewhere where persons will come and see what we're doing. That's the difference between what happened yesterday and what we intend to do. And right. So the it might be a bit difficult to get the average person to come into Queen's Park and see us. That I think that's the challenge we have. Um and I, I'm not and I'm, I'm not even sure if it's the average person. I think I if, think it's, it is a specific audience that we if, want. If, if you... Go ahead. Go ahead, Michael. No. Imagine my mom was <clears throat> Go ahead, Michael. Oh, no, I was saying what, what, what the chief was saying was that just having a promotional march would have been exactly what the cadets did yesterday. But he wants to, to, to have the march that it is, it is effective in promoting the scouting. And there's a specific audience, whether it's the, whether it's the principals or, or whomever that is going to then look to help us to grow the organization in terms of having capacs or whatever at their schools we want to reach that audience and so having a march through town is not necessarily going to guarantee that we reach that audience so what i'm saying is that we have to understand what our audience is and then see how we can come up with a mechanism that allows us to reach that audience if you're going to have a promotional march Um, one year, we had a display set up in Jubilee Gardens, and we got quite a bit of feedback from it. The problem we had is that the display was not as well supported as we would have liked, so there was not enough on display um, during the day. But actually, for that display, most of the feed, most of the people that would have stopped by, would have stopped by long after the parade would have passed. That would be in the afternoon, the afternoon crowd that comes to town. Um, they wouldn't even have seen the parade. Most of that would have been like after the midday time, 
going on to about four or five o'clock when we land. Right? That's the other problem with the parade is that we can do a parade, we got to do it early because we don't want to be out too late in the sun. But nowadays, when I say nowadays, I'm talking about just now, but the last five, six years now, there is not a large crowd in town early in the morning anymore. There are people that still go to town early, but it's not a large group. In. Most people tend to go later in the day. But the problem with that is then you will be parading in the midday or 1 a.m. sandwich. You don't want to be doing that. Not that I'm against the parade. I don't want anybody to think that. That's what I'm saying. I'm just saying we got to think it out properly and see how best we can maximize the opportunity. What we need to ask is what we need to ask is if any ideas anybody else have ideas. Um, I know Mike just highlighted some stuff there. Any ideas that you think that we can add to that, Mike? Well, I think I think if you're gonna have a promotional parade, you want to make sure that you have the the the, the cameras. You want to have all the media houses on board so that even though on the day, uh, they may not be the audience that you're able to reach. Whatever it's, 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 it's the nation, the, the, the Sunday Sun or or the CBC TV, you want to be able to, to put right. those resources so that you can then reach, reach a wider audience. Right. So that's, why I'm, that's why I'm talking about the highlighting the fact that we need, really need to market this from early because, as I said, we are doing things differently now because we have a committee which really highlights a lot of upcoming events on the social media platform. I think they're doing a fantastic job. And like the little countdowns to the days that things are coming, all these things that we, we didn't do before, I think that will play a different, uh, or bring a different aspect to how people will be able to know what's happening and make their way. No, yes, it's very true. Town has become a dead place as opposed to the past years. But I think that this could be a drawing factor into our work as a plus to us. Um, I think we can draw people down to an area that we can capitalize and control and utilize in our interests. I believe that is something that we can really, if somebody could bring some more ideas on how we can do this. Um, but I think what you're saying, me and you're on the same page in terms of marketing is very, very important. And that's think that's really the strategy needs to be changed. I mean, we, the approach needs to be different in order to get the, the people into Queen's Park. Um, we just had AgroFest, and I'm sure to get people into AgroFest, they will have to advertise that there's an activity in, in Queen's Park going on in relation to that particular event. So I think that when we have events coming up and we are holding it in a particular um, place like Queen's Park, let's draw the people to come to Queen's Park, you see? Um, People in Barbados tend to, um, to like to follow things that they can see. And I think where the parade comes into play, I mean, we can't compare it to cadets because that's a whole different element there. Uh, they are strong. We are now trying to rebuild. And uh, we have a, a chance where the parade, they're seeing boys in uniform and they're seeing that the association is rebuilding because numbers... Uh, might not be there as in the past, but to see boys going through town and mommy and daddy have their child there that the school sponsoring authorities have advertised and say, well, let's go down and watch this march. These boys who want to get in the Cubs, you know, will say, hey, I like, hold on, these boys look in their uniform. I want, these, I want to be part of that. So that's where promotional comes into play, right? Uh, but as I said, um, you got to be open to ideas and anything that we can add. It would be good if the organization could come together, Chief, and put it out there to do some kind of uh, some kind of census or some input by different people to the groups to make an input. Yes, please. Yes, can you hear? Yeah. Yes, Chief. Um, I like the whole idea of using the the technology to 
highlight what is happening and what will happen in scouting. But for the promotional march, I think in the past, we were just concentrating on promoting scouting on the day, you know, through the marches and through displays and so on. But we need to use the technology, record it, so that even if the target groups that we want to be there on the day watching, you know, even if we don't make it, then, you know, we could use those recordings, play them at another time, maybe on TV, you know, you can have something, you know, where we can discuss and so on, but we use the recordings at a later time, they cater to those persons who may not have made it on the particular day to be a part or even observe the, the, the promotion and display at the time. But we need to do marketing. Well, yes, as Mike said, we have been doing a good job now. The team has been doing a good job with promoting scouting. And, you know, I share those with my contacts. But we need to step up some more and continue using that technology so that those who are coming after, those who may not make it on the day, can also see and that will kind of encourage them to want to be a part of Token. Megan Yearwood is saying in chat, I can see where Mike is going. We can have tech pitching and striking, pioneering and backwoods basic. So there's some agreement here. You see, Chief, Chief if you're able to record it, you can, you can, uh, there's also avenues like the, the nation do products and, and what's not. If we could get enough people, business places to, to put in enough ads, we could probably get a two page or a three page thing in the sun. This sun that will reach a much wider audience because our intention is to try to reach as wide an audience as we can and maybe work with CBC or to do a feature around the same time showing, showing details of, of scouting activity. Uh, Sherwood McCaskey may be a good person to, to contact um, and see if we can get him to do a half an hour blitz on on, on the, on the Scout, Boy Scout Association. Showing all the activities that we do so that people will, will understand uh, what scouting is about and maybe want to have the kids involved. Go ahead, Mike. Any, any other suggestions or comments? Okay, I get that no one else has anything else. If you think of anything else afterwards, please. Submit your suggestions to us so that we can include them. Which moves us into item five. So any time. The floor is open now to anyone who has any questions they wish to pose. And I will do my best to answer them. Chief, I'm sure uh, there are questions that, things that I didn't address. Could you just give me the website again? Pardon? The website for the for the uh, the, uh, the training stuff. www.barbadascouts.org. Good. Got it. Okay. I mean a young. Alicia, I am mean of y'all. I meant of us. I take a picture of y'all already. Oh. Any, any other questions? None? I'm sure people have questions and things that I didn't, I didn't address in my 
Discussion points? Uh, Trevor, uh, we'll be there for registration. I know that we're near the end of March, so. Registration will start April 1st, and it's supposed to be in by April 31st. Sorry, 30th of April, if I remember correctly. The forms will be out at the end of the week. There are no changes in forms as far as I know. So you can start preparing your information for your forms. I know Sandra has asked about that. There was a point in any other business they had to raise to do with registration. And that is this year, your registration forms must include, this group registration forms must include a financial statement. We are preparing a video. We recorded it yesterday. It should be out by the coming weekend. Right? <laughs> Which explains what is required and how to do it. We are not looking for it. We do not expect you to have anything um, fancy. It is simple. Most groups at this point in time are just dealing with the subs they collected. Maybe one or two small fundraising events at their meeting place at their school probably had a camp or two. So the financial statements are not very difficult to do if you were keeping track of your records. And if you were not, now is the time to start going and looking back up for your records from camp or whatever else you did, see how much subs you collected and what you did out. Even if your group had no subs and no income for the year, which I will find difficult to believe that no one paid no subs whatsoever. But in that case, you will submit a financial statement that says income zero, expenses zero, balance zero. That's the reality of it. But a financial statement must come in. So if your group only had $50 for the year, then it will be subs $50. And you bought $55 in badges, badges $55 and got your $55 receipt. Submit a statement for minus five dollars. That is all that is required. So start doing looking for it. But this year we will not be taking the forms without financial statements. On the website is the sample documents that you will need to fill it out. There's a for a, a, a sample. Income and expense statement, simple income and expense statement is in an Excel format. You just got to fill in the blanks and it's, and it's calculating everything for you. And the list of assets. This is of assets is everything the group owns. We've made it simple. We didn't, we didn't even ask you to value what the things cost or what the replacement costs are at this time. All we're asking you is to list the equipment that the group owns. And in the video, I explained to you why that is important. We are not trying to see how much money you got. In fact, more than likely, I personally won't be even looking at the financial statements. But they have to be coming so that they be on record, so that if there are any issues, it is to protect you as well as the association. Any other questions in Q&A time? Yeah, good evening. Um, can you give me the steps again for to transfer? For example, if you wanted to move a leader from one section to another, like say from Beavers to Cubs or Cubs to Scouts. Okay. You will have to notify your you talk with your group. I'm assuming that you're talking about within the same group. So the first conversation that has to be happen is with your group scout leader. Because you can't be changing one section to the next and your group for leader doesn't know or approve. The next person to talk to would be your 
it is your district scout or DC, depending on how the district hierarchy is set up. But more or less, it will be your ABC district scout and they will point you to the right person. Once that has done and everybody's in agreement. So, what do you want, like, that time? Once that has been done and everybody's in agreement, you will then apply the appointments committee or a change of your appointment because you would have an appointment now, a particular role. So you'll be asking for a new appointment in a new role. You don't have to apply again if you are within your five-year appointment. For people who have not been issued new appointments, you can, you can do it like as a new appointment because you don't have an old one, but somebody who would be within their five-year appointment, they will just apply for a new appointment. They will check off that all is right. And then Krishna Mishra will have to approve because depending on what training you have would have done before, we will have to make sure that you are aware of how to function in your new role. Because even though we do general wood badge, when you complete your visits and further parts of your training, which are practical, you complete that practical part in your section and not across other sections. Same thing like the campers, et cetera. So we will have to decide if you require further training and we are working on sectional training now, but you may be required to complete sectional training before your appointment is granted. And that is the process as it is right now. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? All right, yeah, get that. There are not there are no other questions. Any other business? You're gonna get the ball rolling. If anybody doesn't have any other business, otherwise they probably would come up with a question and ask the thing. Um minimum standards. I would like to encourage everyone, if you have not done so already, to download RR. Look at chapter three, which is entitled Scout Groups, and look for the unit in which you operate, the section for the unit in which you operate. I.e., there's a set of rules for Beaver Scouts, set for Cub Scouts, set for Scouts, and set, set a set for Venture Scouts. In each of the sectional sparks, there's a Rule towards the end of the section that is named minimum standards. And I'd like everybody to check the minimum standards for your unit. The minimum standards for, in general, for all the sections is operation overseen by a leader, i.e., there's supposed to be a leader running the unit. A specified number of adults per boy to be present. Sorry, no. A specified number of adults to be present at meetings. In cubs and beavers, the number is a representative fraction, whereas a Scouts and Ventures is a specific number. It says number of adults. It does not say number of leaders. Okay? So when it comes to the minimum number of adults to be present during activities or meetings, he's talking about volunteers as well. All right? So 
but it says what is the minimum number to be present. Third standard is the delivery of an appropriate high quality balanced program. An appropriate means obviously the program being provided for beavers would be different, the program is provided for cows would be different the ones for scouts, which are one provided for ventures. And there is a rule that tells you exactly what qualifies as a quality balanced program. There should be opportunities for the members, this is the youth members, to take part in the decision making process. It does not say that every decision made, you must consult the youth. But it says that the youth must have opportunities to be able to take part in the decision making process. And that obviously is um, determined, the level is determined obviously by their age. Okay? But as you get higher into scouts and ventures, is more involved than maybe a beaver is. But regardless of the section, youth members are supposed to have an opportunity to take part in decision making. And the fifth minimum standard is the opportunity for every youth member to attend at least one Nights Away experience every year. Does not say that you have to have a camp every year, but it says the youth members in your unit are supposed to have the opportunity to attend at least one Nights Away experience every year. Doesn't say they have to go, but I have to have had the opportunity to go to one. I want everybody to go and check yours clearly because that is what each group is supposed to be providing. Each member of the association is entitled to that. The rule goes on to say that if your group does not meet the minimum standards for two consecutive years, the district or the group scout leader, because if your unit is not functioning, and the other units in the group are functioning, group scout leader can sanction that unit. Or the district can step in and sanction the unit. Okay, I, I, it tells you exactly what can and cannot be done. I'm not going to try and get in that. So check to see what you are providing. Provide, delivering the youth program does not mean that you are a lot of boys there for the evening and all around playing play games and have a good time. Yeah, they're supposed to have a good time. But that is not a high quality, balanced program. Your boys come, enjoy themselves, and get enough badges that is not, and no awards, that is not a high quality, balanced program. Okay, you are shortchanging your boys if you are not doing that. So I want everybody to check that out. I know y'all don't read R and R because from the questions I get, I know I'm going to read it. But go out and check that requirement. Check and see what you are obligated to provide for your members. Anybody has any questions about that? All right, the last item of my lobby that I had to raise is the appointment of a new chief commissioner. In June at AGM, I will mark four years of my five year term. And my term is for five years. It will expire right now based on the current planning on the 30th of June, 2025. Okay? In past, it was to AGM, but we ain't doing it, AGM. You start at the beginning of the month. You need a couple of days to handle the handover and all of that. 
Um, some people think it should be actually in August instead of July, but let's go to the end of June for now. Rules that we have in place, which I have right for nine imposed on me, says that all appointments, all, are for five years. Regardless of the post that you hold. So my appointment ends on the 30th of June, 2025. If I wish to um, continue as Chief Commissioner, my post still has to be advertised and everyone who wants to hold that post ha will have the opportunity to apply to be Chief Commissioner. And if I want to be Chief Commissioner, continue to be Chief Commissioner, I must apply for the position as well. There is no automatic renewals, carry forwards, nothing like that. You interview five years ago, so you're going to interview again. It does not work like that. The post must be advertised, and it will be advertised towards the end of January. And applications will probably close in March so that interviews can happen and the National Executive Committee can meet with the Appointments Advisory Committee, get their um, submissions to make a decision on the person they will recommend at the AGM of 2025. I'm telling you all this now because this will start before our next town hall. So I can't wait next town hall to tell you so. By the time we get the next town, town hall, applications will probably be in, applications will even be closed by then for all we know. So that is why I'm addressing this now. Around October, sorry, around August, September time, an information sheet will come out entitled Selecting a New Chief Commissioner, which will detail the process that is involved in selecting a Chief Commissioner. Okay? Applications, the interview process, the thing, who does the appointment, the approval, etc. I just also want to make it clear that although the National Executive Committee receives the recommendation or recommendations of the Appointments Advisory Committee, and they will shortlist it and put a preferred candidate, they do not make the decision. The decision is made at the AGM. And actually, the AGM does not have to approve the person that they recommend. However, a new person cannot be elected at the AGM. Because of our rules, the person that coming into any position has to be vetted. If the AGM does not approve the person that the executive recommended, but they will approve one of the other people who applied and were interviewed, that is possible, but a new person cannot come on the floor at AGM. If it is turned back at AGM, then the process will start again. And the existing chief commissioner will continue, but the new process must be completed within one year. You cannot continue more than a year in an extended appointment. So within one year, we'll have to find a new candidate, meet and appoint the person. Okay? I just want to make sure everybody understand the process um, that will go. When you see the adver ad advertisement, I don't want anybody to think that I resigned from the position or anything like that, is that my time will have come to end. And at that time, I will decide whether I am applying again or not. Because that, that is not written in stone either. Okay? So don't not apply because you figure I can apply again. If you are interested in doing it, taking any position, apply. As I tell you, for every other position, if you do not apply, you have to take who you get. 
All right? And there is no guarantee that I will be applying again. So if you think you can do the job or you know somebody who you think can do the job, then get behind, either send in your application or get behind them to send in theirs. Um, don't make any assumptions. All right, I just want everybody to understand all that up front and clear. Okay, anybody has anything else to raise on any other business? I want to start looking at me so. All right, there are no other points to raise at this time. We'll move to item seven, adjournment. Before I do, I would like to remind you that on Saturday, we have an open day for Lee here at headquarters. It is not just for the, the, the members of the groups participating in the project. It's for everybody in the association. Come and see what's going on. It's not just displays and see you can get hands-on experience in the container gathering, gardening. Bring your container and we show you how to convert it and help you plant a seedling that you can take home to raise or come and get, try at making one of the items from pallet wood. Again, again a hands-on experience on how you can convert a pallet into something of value. Um, not just you, but your whole family. It's not just for scope members either. Bring your family, come down, see what is going on, and take part in it. Even though it's not for your group or your son or daughter may be too young, that like your son may be too young or too old to be in scouts, or your daughter, well, your daughter can't join, but they can come and partake in the activities going on and learn about the activities as well and take part in them. So I encourage you to come up for that. And then the following Saturday, we have the family fun day at Queen's Park. Come out and enjoy the day, bring your family. It's a family fun day and not a scout activity. Just for scouts, come down. And then we had a good time last year and I'm sure we're gonna have a better time this year. So come out and join us for that event. If that is it, I thank all of you for taking the time to be here this evening. And those of you who are streaming on YouTube as well. Um, thanks for participating. Those who made comments or suggestions, thanks to you. And they would be noted. And we will be sure to incorporate them where possible. Good evening. And for those of you who are not home, come home safely. Good evening. All right, everybody, please get in good. Thank you and good evening to everyone. Have a good evening. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening, everyone.